Hi, I'm Penny McLean with Flick Direct. I'm here to speak to a couple different ladies about body image and women's issues in the entertainment industry. First, say welcome to everybody, and if you can introduce yourself, that's that'll be okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. Sure. Here. Hi, I'm Elisa Teague. I'm the editor-in-chief and creator of Cupcake Quarterly Magazine. We're a vintage pinup magazine that features girls of all shapes and sizes. Okay, I want to go visit you, and I would love to do a portfolio on that. <laughs> She's amazing, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Helena Santos-Levy. I'm an actor, producer, and the founder of Ms. in the Biz, which is a magazine-style blog written by and for women in entertainment. Hi, my name is Miracle Lori, and I am known from being on Joss Whedon's Dollhouse. Yes. Love it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leah Savoli. I'm an actress, host, and voiceover artist from Robot Chicken, and I am the founder of this panel, All Shapes and Sizes Welcome. Hi, I'm Danny Lennon. I'm an actress, writer, and producer, and I'm best known for a web series from television series, Bite Me. Hi, I'm Gloria Shreenava, aka Glow Pinksa on YouTube. Um, I'm very new to this. And <laughs> um, I started the Beauty Adjustment, which is basically what we talk about, and it's all about self-acceptance and helping others accept the fact that people are different, and that's what I do. <laughs> okay, so first question. I love the whole topic, body image, women's issues. We're all women. Mm -hmm. Always have issues, right? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. And in the entertainment industry. So with all of you, you have different pieces to the entertainment field. So give me some of your issues. Let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, where do we all start? Um, you know, it's it's very tricky. For me, I've always been the height that I am. I'm five nine and a half. And you put on a pair of heels and you're six foot. Uh, top secret, most guys in Hollywood are short. So that's awkward for me sometimes. <laughs> um, so my height alone has always made me feel a little different. It's not better or worse, whatever. I just feel like, oh, I'm a little different than most girls that I'm around. And then you put the fact that I'm not a twig and I just have like an athletic, I have my dad's body basically. <laughs> you know, you just have shape to you and height and it's just a different thing and as an actress you see that there is a kind of cookie cutter thing that you're supposed to look like and quite frankly it's impossible it's impossible for me to look like somebody else because this is the body that I was given and I think people forget and like there's only even if you're a little extreme about it there's only so much plastic surgery there's only so much hair dye there's only so many outfits you can put on and it's like you're still you you know so you just have to really own whatever that is and we all get hired for our essence anyway I believe so it's like just figure it out embrace it if you have things to work through please work through them work on your craft be a good person and I think eventually it'll all work out for you awesome. <laughs> and, it, and it did as well <laughs> All of our issues. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that we definitely talk about on this panel, not necessarily only shape and size, um, color, sexualization of women. But for me personally, I'm Filipino, Russian, German. And um, yeah, it's sort of a strange mix, right? And there's this whole like ethnically ambiguous thing that's like super popular in Hollywood, but also it doesn't really help you fit in a box. And Hollywood really likes to box you, which is great because it helps them sell a product, it helps them sell a show, it helps them sell a specific character. But I think that we're all getting a little wiser and the whole world is changing. We're all different mudge pudge like mixes of ethnicities. And so personally, you know, growing up, I didn't really have any role models who looked like me, uh, specifically being my skin color. So, uh, yeah, right? I mean, and, and for me, like, it goes back to when I was seven years old, and the first time I realized I looked different was when this girl said to me, you're brown like poo, you should be in the toilet. And I was like, I, I was shocked. I went and cried for a while because I had no idea that my skin was any different. So it really, I mean, and in my seven-year-old brain, I was like, wow, an adult is the one that told you that. And so it's kind of been a thing for me where I've always really wanted to make it all women, no matter what color, shape, big, small, whatever, feel empowered and help them with that journey. So I think that Hollywood's doing a better job. I think it can get much, much better. And I think that we can start to see more women of color, specifically um, of different shapes and sizes on our screens. And I think that like, yay for Mindy Kaling, she's doing an amazing job. And there's a lot of other women doing that too. But yeah, for me, that's a, that's a big thing I like to talk about. That's awesome. Okay, next one. Well, coming from the magazine, perspective, um, we are really trying to encourage women to look within themselves and find the beauty within themselves, even if they don't think that they fit what the media is putting out there as the ideal woman, because there is no ideal woman for any person. Everybody has their own tastes that they like, and everybody has their own feelings about themselves inside. And even though I preach this 
all day and night to everybody. I still have my own issues with myself. I still look at myself in the mirror every day and say, and think to myself what I would like to change about myself. But I know that I'm doing the very best that I can. I eat healthy, I take care of myself, I work out, and this is how I am. And I embrace it, I flaunt it, and it's done wonders for me, and I, I'm just trying to get other people to do the same. Awesome. All right. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, personally, I mean, the, the reason I started this goes more into, like, um, eating disorders, and I, I suffer from some emotional binge eating. So I have gone up and down, up and down, up and down, and I've never really felt... Um, that there's a place for me in the mainstream world of, of casting and agents and managers. I've been told you're too skinny to play the fat girl, but you're too fat to be the thin girl. And it's wow. like, okay, well, where does the girl in the middle go? Um, so for me personally, it's been more about creating my own opportunities, producing my own projects, and putting ourselves out there in a way so that society can be like, oh, there's a normal looking woman in this project. Um, and hoping that as time changes, obviously there's a long route to go, but as time changes that this happens on a more regular basis, you know, because all of us, and, and particularly in the entertainment industry, and we know getting into this, that it's a road full of rejection, mm -hmm. and you have to be strong enough to do that. But I feel, um, and Danny can piggyback on this, that a lot of times, it kind of can contribute to possibly the eating disorder or, or the, the self-esteem that's going on. And, and you have to have thick skin. But yet again, at the same time, the reason this panel started was because someone left a really negative comment on a photo that I put up of myself. And so at the same time, though, you have to have your thick skin, but then you have to find the love within yourself to be like, it doesn't matter what you just said, because I know I'm awesome and I know I rock. And hopefully that's, right. that's a place where we can all get to. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. Absolutely. Amen to what everyone said. And it only pertains to why I'm here, um, why I'm attracted to this, the issue that I'm dealing with, and this panel is really helping me with, and has almost brought me to tears quite a few times, is that I struggle with an image disorder called uh, body dysmorphia, which stems from deep self-loathing. And mine happens, the, the source of that happens to be abuse in all different types of forms. And that's a hindrance because I'm Body dysmorphia is an unrealistic view of yourself. I think that I'm an obese woman, and it's a very sad, hard thing. And I love my craft, and I love what I do, but then there's so much pressure to be perfect. And when you don't think you're perfect in your mind, I would go to extremes. I, I never had an eating disorder. However, I would work out so much, uh, count calories, worry about how I looked. And it just got to a point of where I just couldn't do this to myself anymore, and I didn't want to see other girls do this. So what I want to do, and, and what I'm really focused on with this, with this panel, is that I want to show that there, you can get through it. There's, there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel that you can do something about it, and how I do that is, I, it's self-reflection. Learn to love myself inside and out for my brain, for my heart, for my soul, and apply that to my acting. And, and uh, how I get through it is, every day it's a positive affirmation. Like if I'm having a flare up as I call it, which I deal with every day, I say, this is wrong. What you're seeing in the mirror is beautiful. It's just a little bit heavier, but it's not who you are. And even if that is what you look like, it's not a bad thing. What's great, what's going on today? Oh, I love my job. I love my husband, I love my friends, I love my job. And so when the positive affirmation comes, then it starts to go away and it fades and you can go about your day. So I just wanna help other people out there. And there was a girl that came up to me today at our signing that just said, I struggle with this. You had me in tears. Last night for me was a day when I heard you at the panel, I felt that I can start on my road to recovery. And I, that just meant a lot to me because I'm on my own road. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna pass this to you, so I'll start <laughs> Yes, to go back. sorry, that was long. Okay, <laughs> well this is my issue. Okay, so I do YouTube videos for a living. And obviously, I'm not exactly, you know, if you couldn't tell, I'm not thin. And, um, I'm here because my boyfriend and I are total opposites. He's tall, he's handsome, and he's muscular, and obviously, like I said, I'm not. So we get a bunch of stares all the time because apparently, according to everyone in the media and the rest of the world, that we're not supposed to be together. And that's not true because he loves me for the way I look without sexualizing you know, me at all because believe it or not, people do that. Um, and he just loves me for the way I look and for who I am. And what I want to bring to this is, you know, to help people realize that one, two people can be in love even if they look different, and two, it's none of their business, really. But um, I mean, it's just people just need to understand that it's not about 
two people looking exactly alike to be in love. And I feel like there something needs to change. And I feel like I need to be one of the voices that says something about this because it's very important to, especially to people who feel like they shouldn't be. I get messages a lot of the time from girls saying, you know, I, I'm i fat, my boyfriend's not, and I feel bad for him because his friends are making fun of him. So I think I'm going to break up with him so he doesn't have to go through this. And it's like, no, you shouldn't break up with your boyfriend if you're happy. If his friends can't handle it, that's their problem and it's not yours. So that's what I do and that's why I'm here. Well, here's my question for all of you. You know how Marilyn Monroe is still a major icon and this person was not a size zero or a two. She had thighs, she has hips, and she had a hiney. Yeah. <laughs> so what I think is so funny, men still idolize her, this sex goddess, because she was va all the time, but she was like honored, and people looked up back in those, like in the 50s, and we're 2013, and it kind of morphed, I feel, because I'm not an actress, but when I see you all, and you've done different things, I understand, and I feel that as an outsider looking at you all and what you're doing is awesome. I think it never should be under the cover or under the rug because you should fight about it because I see a lot of male actors that are, you know, maybe it's their role, but they're not thin. They have a pop belly, you know, and maybe they're not always playing a gangster, but they're not always cut. So I think that with what you're, the, the whole issue of you getting it out there, keep doing it. And I, I, I'm, I'm very honored to be sitting with you and you telling me these personal things because I think it hits everyone, not just in the business, but when we see you. And is there anything else that you guys want to say? Uh, you know, yep. just the Maryland thing really quick. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I actually have a friend that's like crazy obsessed with her and collects things, and she's lovely, one of my favorite human beings. And um, she, I think Marilyn was probably like a size 10, 12 is what they like to say. But I actually saw a piece of Marilyn's clothing, and it's tiny. So we also have to remember that clothing sizes actually don't mean anything. Because on a good day, I could be a size 6. On a bad day, good, bad, whatever. But I'm, what I'm saying is... I can be like a size 6 to a size 12 as I sit here right now, which people be like, that's impossible. It's true. It depends on the brand, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But the Maryland thing, um, you know, men used to love that. I actually think they still do because every, whether it was a stranger, a fan, a friend of mine, family member, I actually hear when they comment on other women, it's not Twiggy. It's not Kate Moss types. It's not like this mm -hmm. thing. And I think there are a lot of men that still really, really appreciate that in, in the business and in, you know, regular life. So yeah. I think Marilyn's still alive. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, th I think that um, men appreciate shapes of all, you know, all sizes. So there, there's a size out there for, for every man. So it's not that men only like Marilyn type bodies, but yes, there are plenty that do. Um, being in this industry, um, doing vintage pinup also. Um, I go to a lot of, you know, rockabilly and vintage, re you know, reenactment and car shows and all kinds of things like that. And I think the difference between Marilyn and girls of that same size today is that girls of that size are taught to cover up. They're taught to wear a baggy t-shirt because they're heavy. And if they wore clothes that fit, because unfortunately it's hard to find clothes that fit and that's actually how I started dressing more vintage is because when I was in high school I could not buy clothes that fit me um, in a normal store so I would go to vintage clothing stores and I would buy vintage clothing that was cut for curvier girls and when I started dressing like that I got a lot of positive not negative like sexual attention but positive attention about how classy I was dressing and how great I looked and it was because I wasn't wearing a t-shirt that was an extra large men's <laughs> shirt that would hang over my boobs right. and flat down and actually make me look even bigger than I was. Um, once I started wearing fitted things I actually looked like I had a, a body and um, I think that a lot of girls are taught to just wear that baggy t-shirt and sweats. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're, because they don't feel confident, and they close up and they sit like this instead of standing tall and being proud of who they are. So I think if girls actually were proud of themselves, dressed for their bodies, they would look like Marilyn, and guys would come a-running. That's great. All right. I think you want to there's, say something. There's so much, though, now. There's so many different things running through my head. Um, absolutely about the clothing. I mean, I live in Los Angeles, and somehow I managed to avoid pool parties 
constantly. I show up as the sun's going down, you know, so that I don't have to do the bathing suit with a pretty dress, but I don't have to do the bathing suit. Um, and you know, with Elisa's Cupcake Quarterly, she invited me to be a part of that last year, and I had just hit 200 pounds for the first time in my life, and I was just feeling like, wow. And she invites me to be on this, and I went, are you really going to, really? And I looked her up, and I looked up what her magazine was about, and I said, yes, you're going to put this nightgown on, and you're going to do this because she's going to make you look beautiful. And it, and it was beautiful. And the thing with Marilyn, we, we brought this up a little bit last night, and Helen will probably jump in on this, is we were talking about sexy, you know, and everyone can be sexy, but the sexy has to come in your brain. And I love Marilyn. I'm a fan. But if you know a lot about her, she wasn't a happy soul inside. So she was, yes, she was beautiful and curvy, and she dressed it. But she was doing what she thought the men wanted her to do, which was then movie contract after movie contract after movie contract, because back then it was even worse. Men writers, producers, directors. I mean, were there any women writers, producers, directors in her time? I don't think so. So in reality, she was actually playing into what they needed her to be. And inside, she didn't feel sexy. Inside, she was so alone. So there's, there's such a double-edged sword on that. And she'll jump in. Well, I mean, there's a lot to say about that, but I do, I do want to make sure that I say that if, for anybody out there who wants to see change, and we all do, and we're all struggling with things that we've been talking about and more, and if you want to see change, you want to see things be different in the entertainment industry, you choose what you do with your dollar. So go out and put your money towards the things and support the things that are the way that you want to see things going, not necessarily the things that are hurting us. Like, if there's something that is completely photoshopped and ridiculous and you keep questioning why this magazine is doing it, but you keep buying that magazine, we're all just feeding into the problem. So we really, really need to make some change that way. Ladies? <laughs> everything that they said. Just, yeah, basically everything that was said is totally right. Um, you think you're so, I'll hold this so your arm doesn't hurt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you just don't, you, Oh, okay, so what Leah was saying about, or what everyone was saying about, um, you know, how you feel about shopping for clothes. Obviously, I'm a bigger girl, so it's a little bit harder. And sometimes even then it's just like, oh, my gosh, I don't know. I'm going to stop talking now because it's just going to go okay. over. You can just chime in. Yeah, and, and you'll probably no, follow understand. with something I have. I understand. So there's there's a lot of things. Yeah, I understand. It's frustrating and it sucks sometimes. But, I mean, like, there's I'm happy. There's more designers I'm, that would be... Yeah, like I, just I couldn't just walk in anywhere. I couldn't just walk right. anywhere and pick something up. I would right. have to go to a specific store. And it just, I mean, I'm happy the way I am, but it's just like the clothing choices aren't all there. But um, oh, it would just be nicer if they were. But. Well, to tap into that, I think it starts with education. I had mentioned this on the panel last night. I, I, I find it disturbing. Yes, males get it too, but women get it so much harder. And if we can just educate our children, our sons and our daughters, as, as I say to some of my younger male friends, I'm like, how would you like it? Because I've gotten some nasty comments in my lifetime. I've gotten, you're too pale to date, and when I was heavier, you're too fat to, to be with, or I prefer blondes with hair, blonde hair and blue eyes. Well, then why are you with me? But that type of deal. So that abuse that I, I dealt with, I say to my younger friends, what if someone said this to your mother? or your sister, or your grandmother. Think about that. Or if your own daughter, think about that. And vice versa. So I think it's just starts telling our children early, and that's how we're going to start change, and platforms like this. Which was what was so great about the panel last night. Um, the last question of the night was a little girl, 10 years old. Aww. And she stood up and she said, what do you girls do if you're walking down the street and you hear someone say something mean or, or give you a dirty look? What do you do? And we all just jumped in, and we were all like, ah! we want to take you home and love you and hug you you know and that's that's what we're about is getting there and we we just had an autograph signing it was wonderful we had about 100 people show up and 50 percent of them were teenagers or younger and it was yeah, so was so great. nice it was great. yeah awesome. well i thank you and i've got something for you do you guys all have iphones yeah all right I'll, i'm gonna hit yeah, i don't it's okay that's what I have. I have one too. So don't feel bad. I'm just okay. going to give it to you anyway. I'm sure it'll still work out. And that. well, I'll tell you how. And if I'm missing a car, I'll give you, give you the card. That's great. Thank you. Um, and here's my oh, car. I'll give it to you in a minute. Yeah. So, what this is, this is a countdown movie clock that will count down movies up to a year in advance. And you can, it counts it down for you. And then also TV shows. So, whatever you're basically in, we can check in when you're on it. Your That's fans like so want to watch cool. your shows, so cool. and it's international. 
Hopefully we'll get it on Samsung. Say that to them. Hopefully we'll get it on Samsung. <laughs> Android, <laughs> and I thank you so much. And you know the funny thing when we're talking about Marilyn? Do you know she was really a brunette? Yeah. Oh, yes. And she had yeah. surgery. You know, she had to change her whole look. I don't know yes. I didn't know seen her. Yeah. If you look at pictures of Marilyn Monroe back before she was Marilyn, I personally think she was more beautiful before she had her plastic surgery. But Hollywood changed her, wow. so that was part of everything for her. Norma Jean back then. Yeah, she exactly. was like most younger. things you see are not real. That's yeah. the bottom line. That's but right. we're working on that.